Hello friends, welcome back. In this tutorial, we will study about contiguous memory allocation. A process can be executed only when it is in main memory. So the main memory must accommodate both the operating system and the various user processes which are to be executed. So the main memory is usually divided into two partitions, one for the resident operating system and one for the user processes. And we want several user processes to reside in main memory at the same time. Now, in contiguous memory allocation, each process is contained in a single contiguous section of main memory. Now, in a contiguous memory allocation, one of the simplest methods for allocating memory is to divide main memory into several fixed sized partitions and each partition may contain exactly one process right so what happens uh, in a contiguous memory allocation one of the simplest method for allocating memory is to divide main memory into several fixed sized partitions and each partition may contain exactly one process so in this way what happens so that uh, the degree of multiprogramming depends on the number of partitions. Now, in a contiguous memory allocation, in a variable partition scheme, what happens? Initially, all memory is available for user processes and is considered as one large block of available memory, a whole, right? Eventually, Memory contains a set of holes of various sizes. So, in contiguous memory allocation, when a variable partition scheme is implemented, the operating system keeps a table indicating which part of memory are available and which are occupied. In variable partition scheme, the memory blocks available comprise a set of holes of various sizes scattered throughout the main memory. So when a new process arrives and needs memory, the system searches the set of holes for a hole that is large enough for that process. If the hole is larger than uh, what is required by the process, right? If a hole is uh, too large, right? If uh, the hole is larger, than the memory which is required by the process. In that case, the whole will be divided into two parts, right? One part is allocated to the arriving process and the other is returned to the set of holes. Now, when a process terminates, it releases its block of memory and which is then placed back into set of holes, right? So when a process terminates, it releases its block of memory which is then placed back into set of holes if the new hole is adjacent to other holes right if new hole is adjacent to other holes then these adjacent holes are merged to form a larger hole right these adjacent holes are merged to form one larger hole 